What? Hello again to all my friends. This is our fifth video in the Systems in Action unit, and we are talking about... Libras. Oh, that was so unemotional. Lovers! <laughs> Libras, lovers, whatever you want to call them. Mr. Benjamin here, writing in pink. Mr. Benjamin. How are you today? And... Hey, Mrs. Pudlovsky. And somewhere in the background, Mrs. Abbott Howland is here. We will probably get her input at some point, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's going to be probably a pretty short video. We've already talked we about... We always say that. I know, we always say that. Uh, we've already talked about the different kinds of machines. Uh, today, we are talking specifically about the three classes of levers or levers. Um, you might hear Mr. Benjamin stapling in the background, so he is actually using... And that is a class... Two. Lever. All right, so your learning goals uh, for this lesson are we want you to understand the three classes of levers. Uh, we also expect that you are going to be able to describe those classes and even draw a simple diagram to explain each of the classes of levers. And of course, as always, provide an example. What are, what, they're going to label those diagrams too, right? With well, of course. Effort, load, fulcrum. fulcrum. That's pretty much all we want. There we go. So first class <laughs> lever. So in a first class lever, this is kind of uh, one of the ones that you would normally think about when you're thinking of a lever. So the fulcrum, so remember the fulcrum is the pivot point. So this is our diagram from the last one. I forgot the riddle again. Oh, well, you have to remember it. The fulcrum is in the middle. So you've got input on one side and load on the other side. So input and output on opposite sides of the fulcrum. Um, and that's basically it. So as long as you have your fulcrum in between the input and output, that is what we call first class lever or lever. Um, so first class lever uh, examples would be seesaw. Mm -hmm. And I was told by one of my students the word seesaw is actually British. They don't understand teeter-totter um, in England. So teeter-totter, I guess, is American. But seesaw or teeter-totter, um, you're looking at me like... Well, I'm just confused. trying to think why that would be... Why the Brits would have a problem with that? They just don't understand what teeter-totter is. So they would call it a seesaw. That's very strange. Anyways. And, and in Canada, <laughs> we call it both. So there you go. Um, crowbar is another example of a first class. Um, same with a balance scale. So if you were to have some sort Ooh. of scale, and you have something on this side and something on this side, um, then that would be a first class. Did you know they don't actually have those in Britain? They're against them. It's, it's against the, it's the against, queen doesn't like them. The queen doesn't like She's 90, so... That was her birthday. Today? Yeah. Or no. Yesterday. Yesterday. Um, so balance scale. Also a can opener. So if you, even if you had a can of paint and you're trying to take the lid off of that can of paint, and I know sometimes you would use like a large... Screwdriver. Screwdriver, flat-headed screwdriver. Um, so that acts as a lever to open up that can of paint, and that would be first class. So if you recall from the last video... Mr. Man with boots. Long Boots. I think he had yellow boots, right? Yellow and purple or red, something like that. Okay. I think I colored in his hat, too, at one point. Okay. So yellow, Mr. Long Boots here, uh, remember, he's trying to roll this rock away. And so we've got our effort force at one end here, our load force at the other end here, which would roll away, and our fulcrum is in between those. And so we know that that is a first class. Do you want to label it F-E-L? F. For failure, fulcrum. I mean fulcrum. Uh, e for or excellence or effort. And our load is over. For, no, I'm not going to say it. Okay. Um, second class. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. So the fulcrum is at the end, and both the input and the output forces are in the same direction. So if we see our hand here lifting up this rod, that would be basically our, our levers are basically rod with a fulcrum point. And it's going to pivot at the fulcrum. And in this case, our effort and load are pretty much in the same direction, in the same area. So our load would be somewhere over here. That's a very strange load. I'm going to erase that and draw it again. Mm -hmm. Phone's going off. It's okay. And our input force, which will be our effort, will be going up, causing this load to rise. Do we have examples on the next one? We do. Examples, wheelbarrows. is probably the most common example. Uh, I don't know why I drew that line there, but anyways. <laughs> Wheelbarrow, most common. Bottle openers are very second-class levery as well. The effort and the load are going in the same direction. Let me try to get a bottle in here. Uh, yeah, that looks like a bottle. So, bottle opener will kind of go around here, and our effort will be moving up. The load as well, which is the cap, will also be moving up. 
And our fulcrum is that way? On the end. Oh, right here. Yeah, pretty much. Right, because that's the pivot point. Fulcrum, load, and effort. Let's get rid of that monstrosity. And we have a stapler and a paper cutter. So I'm just going to maybe give you a quick overview of the wheelbarrow. So basically the wheelbarrow, um, of course, you've got some sort of um, load of, say, rocks or dirt or whatever. Um, and you've got your handles on this end. And down here is where you've got your wheels. Okay. So when you lift it off of the ground, um, your effort is basically coming up off of the ground. So you're going to lift the back part up which means your load lifts up as well, and your fulcrum is that pivot point on the bottom, and so here's your fulcrum down here, um, and you've got your load and your effort, okay? Uh, the last one is a third class lever, so for a third class lever you have your input force between the fulcrum and the output force. So this is the only one where your input force is actually going to be uh, right here in the middle. Okay, but fulcrum is still on the end, um, and then the load is going to be on the further end. So um, input and output forces are both in the same direction. So that's another thing that you want to keep in mind uh, for a third class lever, is that you have both the input and the output forces going in the exact same direction. So some examples for you, a baseball bat, um, a hammer when you're driving a nail, uh, you're going to have a third class lever for that. Even something as simple as the human arm. So anything that you're going to do with the human arm, um, you've got the pivot point either at the elbow if you're talking about the forearm, or the pivot point would be your shoulder if you're talking about the entire arm, um, and that would be a third class lever. Um, and a fishing rod, actually, um, is a really good example of a third class lever. So you have... It also uses a simple machine, right? Well, Wheel it never is a simple machine. Oh, yeah. Never mind. Ignore. <laughs> uses multiple simple machines is what I was trying to say. You mean I'm the gonna... actual... Yes, the yeah. mechanism. I'm going to get back to staple. <laughs> um, and a broom or a rake, which are actually some examples that I don't know about your class, but my class came up with those when we initially were talking about simple machines. I had a few uh, that said a broom or a rake, and they're absolutely correct, and they are forms of third-class levers. Yeah, we were probably too busy playing Pokemon or something. Pokemon? Yeah. Play Pokemon sometimes. Okay. <laughs> and I think that's... I have an idea for try this. Okay. So, we had a discussion about nail clippers. We couldn't decide whether nail clippers... Would, I'm not even going to tell them what we thought it would be. So your try this is to decide what class, what lever class, nail clippers would be considered as. And be sure to come up with a good argument, because I'm sure people are going to disagree. And is that Ms. Evan Howland coming in now? It is! She's coming in! We were just talking about it. You want to say hello? No. no. Say oh. hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so we're giving them a little assignment to decide what kind of, or what class of lever nail clippers would be. Excellent. And they're going to uh, come up with a little, maybe even a little diagram. Diagram, perfect, yeah. Of what type of class of a lever the nail clipper would be. Fantastic. All right. What Excellent. I'll and be happy to hear it. There you go. We'll find out what you guys come up with. And so with that, we say... Thank you. Thank you. And hope you have a wonderful weekend, and we will see you on Monday. Beautiful.